My name's Fiona Murray. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship here at MIT, and I'm also the Associate Dean for Innovation and Inclusion. So that means that I have responsibility for trying to create an environment and a culture and the resources that our entire MIT community needs to make sure that they can uh, develop all their innovative ideas, solve the problems and challenges that are really, really important to them, and that we can create as inclusive a culture as possible so that all of you feel very welcome here on campus. I started my undergraduate career uh, studying chemistry and I studied chemistry in England at Oxford and the way the English system works is that when you choose a subject that's basically the main thing that you do. Uh, so I studied inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, physical chemistry uh, but every now and then I found the opportunity to sneak out of the chemistry department and go and study some of the history of science because I was always incredibly interested in the way in which we've come to be where we are in terms of innovation, the technologies that we have at our disposal, our understanding of science. And I was always really interested in who the people were who were involved in these very, very important activities. Uh, I went on actually to do a PhD in engineering in the United States because I wanted to do something a little more hands-on and practical. When I finished, I decided to uh, spend time at a school of management because I was really interested in how you manage and organize the whole business of science and technology. And I wanted to think about how we build organizations who can actually take ideas all the way through from inception to impact. I wanted to be part of that journey and help support other people doing that journey. And most recently, I've spent a lot of time working with governments because they can be very important in creating those conditions for innovators around the world, whether it's visa policies, tax policies, all kinds of things that you would never really expect make such a difference. And so I've had the opportunity to advise lots of government uh, leaders internationally in making some of those very important decisions that shape uh, the innovation environment that we all have around us today. So my definition of innovation is the process of taking ideas from inception all the way through to impact. And so let me just step back and unpack that just a little bit. So ideas, what's an idea? It's more than just a eureka moment. It's the entire process of going from having those creative insights all the way through to actually making a difference in the world. An idea is also more than just a piece of technology, a widget, um, a piece of software, a robot. An idea is really a match between a problem and a solution. Quite often in a place like MIT, we're really, really good at building new solutions, building new bits of code, building new uh, quantum dots, being, building things at the nano scale all the way through to the macro massive scale. But the question we always have to ask ourselves is what problem are we actually trying to solve? What's the big challenge? Because most of us decide to get up and do what we do in the morning because we want to solve problems. We're a community of problem solvers. And so for me, innovation is all about finding that match between a problem and a solution. And what MIT is about is giving you the space to basically go on that journey and to take your ideas as far as you possibly can before we then have to move outside into the larger innovation economy, raise the funds, build the organizations that will really deliver that impact at scale. So look, so one of my responsibilities is for innovation and inclusion. And when I took on the inclusion set of responsibilities, some people said to me, look, why are you taking on this completely different set of activities and responsibilities? And for me, these two things have always been really naturally interconnected. We know from all sorts of academic evidence and research, as well as just from our own lived experience, that we're much more likely to come up with good ideas and interesting ideas and really be able to do something with those ideas when we work in a team. And Although it can be quite difficult to work with people who are different from us, we also know that if we can get through some of those early frictions and difficulty, that we often have our most productive moments and experiences when we're working with people who have different backgrounds, who maybe come from a different country, who have a different socioeconomic experience, different gender, different gender identity, different sexual orientation. And it's not about counting the number of people who look different from us, you know, how many people of different races we have on our team. It's about thinking about how is your lived experience different from mine? And how will that allow you to explore problem space and see problems differently to me? And how will it allow you to explore solution space in a way that's different than how I would explore solution space? And how, we, how can we bring those sorts of perspectives together? I think that's a much more useful and productive way for us to think about inclusion. 
everyone can play a different part. So you can bring different lived experiences, but you can also choose to play a different part in that innovation journey. Uh, there's certainly a little bit of a cult of a heroic entrepreneur. And so we often sort of aggrandize those people who start companies. And of course, that's a sexy and exciting thing for us to do. And at the moment in our economy, uh, those people are important and they create lots of wealth and jobs. But there are lots of different roles to play. And in fact, some of the most successful entrepreneurs are people who wait till later in their career to do that. What they choose to do when they finish university is they choose to go and work either in a large corporation where they might get some really different experience. They might want to go and be in a research lab and do a PhD, or they might want to join a growing company because they don't want to be the CEO or the CTO as soon as they graduated from college, but they want to join a really exciting, vibrant team trying to make a difference. And so I've always been very, very struck by the openness, the down-to-earth nature, the practical nature of MIT. And it's actually the thing that has kept me here for over 20 years. I came to MIT as a visiting professor and I came intending to only stay for a year. And 20 years later, I'm still here because it's an extraordinary place. And it's a place that you can feel really proud of being part of, um, but without being intimidated by it.